Let's look behind the mod and let's take a look at AI suggested mods. Alright, well this is the first episode for Behind the Mods, a little series I'm going to do basically showing the code of the mods that I make for my other channel, Kaupenjo, some entertainment style content for Minecraft. I basically just make some, you know, unique mods, some interesting mods that look interesting, look cool and kind of make cool mods. And in this series, we're taking a deep dive into the code of this mod. I do highly recommend watching the video first so you sort of know what is going on. The general idea was that I had ChatGPT give me three ideas for mods and I implemented them. The first idea was to implement magic spells like fireballs and teleportation and things like that. And I was like, okay, let's do the fire and the teleportation. The second idea was drones that could do combat, farming, building, things like that. And then the third idea was a full, fully fledged theme park, which I didn't actually implement because that is ludicrous. So the first one, as I said, was the idea of fire and teleportation. And this is basically what I implemented. So the teleportation orb, that's just an item, right? And that is a, basically allows you to teleport. Now it is very, very straightforward. It simply has a use method over here. So this is of course our right click method. And this is pretty much the contents of the ender pearl class, right? So if I actually go Ender Pearl item right here, you can see this is almost exactly the same as this because that's pretty much exactly what it does, right? It, you just have to throw an Ender Pearl and then land there. Now I have it as an item stack, so it looks like an Ender Eye. And also instead of consuming the item, I actually have it just hurt the item and then break. Now one quick thing, this is in fabric, but you know, it shouldn't really matter that much because the general idea should hopefully translate to forge as well. And then the fire orb is a little bit different. It is a large fireball, even though the, the variable here is called small fireball, because I first used a small fireball, but that doesn't have an explosion associated with it. Like it doesn't destroy blocks. And I was like, nah, I wanted to destroy blocks as well. Now the real issue here that I had is getting it to go into the right direction because during programming, I had it, it always zipped into the air in a very, very weird way. I still am not quite sure why that is the case. When a large fireball is created, you can see that we have a D, E, and F over here. And those, if we just continue to go through this, right? Once again, D, E, and F, go to super again, D, E, and F, go to this again, D, E, and F. And then you can see it basically moves to this position, which I don't still don't quite understand because I was, I think before I was passing in the player position or something like that. So I don't quite understand why that is like how it does that and how it calculates it. But for whatever reason, if you get the view vector for the player with one F over here and you just give it X, Y, Z, then for whatever reason it works. Yeah, passing in the one F basically just ensures that you get the correct X and Y rotation. I'm honestly quite unsure about what exactly this insanity does, but it worked after I put it in. So I was like, you know what? That's gonna be okay. That's gonna be good enough. And yeah, that's pretty much all that the magic stuff does. But probably you're not here for the magic stuff. You're probably here for the drone and the AI. Yes, indeed. I did some AI stuff and honestly, it was not necessarily easier than I expected, but it was pretty, pretty awesome. So just to look at the drone entity right here, it has some animation stuff. So that's just from Gecko Lib. I'm pretty sure I could have also done it without Gecko Lib, but but, you know, I'm just so used to using Gecko Lip, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And then we have the mob interact method right here. That's just the right click method for the mob. And you can see if I right click it with a drone remote and that remote has a tag, then we're going to just save the position from the tag into this particular drone entity. And as soon as this has a position, then both the drone move to block goal as well as the drone harvest goal are sort of activated. The drone move to block goal is actually fairly straightforward. It just is this, that's all that there's to it. And we basically just on the start set a wanted position for the move control of the drone as well as in the tick method. You probably don't want a new position to be set every tick. So I don't know if this is not too bad. However, it's probably not the best idea. However, this is how I got it to work. And for the drone itself, the drone, the move control over here is just a custom drone move controller. Now this one is literally exactly the same from the ghast because there is no other class that actually moves like, well, I mean, flies properly. And um, you can see this uh, is the move gas controller right here. And this is exactly the same thing pretty much as this one. So this is why it is so extremely important. If someone's like, how do I make XYZ mob, right? How do I make a flying mob? Take a look at the gas, take a look at some other mobs. There's a lot of stuff already in vanilla that you can 
almost copy straight over, try to make it so that it works for your use case, and then there you go. So I didn't have to reinvent the wheel with the drone move control because, well, it was already existent. The only thing I really need to figure out is, okay, how can I give it a position and then it moves to that position? And well, the way that I did it is with the set wanted position. I, I figured that out later down the line and there you go. And the drone harvest goal was actually a little bit easier because the general idea was just that I just wanted it to check every five seconds whether or not the crop below itself is of age, right? So basically, uh, whether or not the crop age is equal to the max age, this basically means that a crop is fully grown. If this is the case, then you just return that as true, right? So this would be true. If this is true, then you can harvest that block. So you're just making sure on the server, you're destroying that block at the position below the drone. So this is below where the drone is. And then you're just saying true for it to drop. And you're saying this drone broke the block. And honestly, that's pretty much all that there's to it. I mean, the goals are actually not that complicated, all things considered. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. So they're actually pretty good. Um, I am kind of interested in looking a little bit more into this mod. I'm not 100% sure whether or not I want to continue developing it. If there's interest on this video or the original Countenjo video, then I might look into it a little bit more um, because I think that this could be a pretty cool mod. But um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure because uh, I don't know how many mods I can develop at the same time and also still do videos and all of that craziness. So we'll see. And as always, of course, the code will be available to you in the description below in a GitHub repository. Now, in this case, it will only be available in Fabric 119 two, I believe. Let me double check. Yes. Yes. 119.2. So please do keep that in mind. However, when it comes to this, the train of thought usually is m way more important than what the actual code says. You can always translate it if you really needed to and you wanted to. So no worries there. And that was the first Behind the Mods episode. Please leave me a comment down below if you like this and if you want to see anything else. Otherwise, I will see you next time. So yeah.